The Biobank staff at Chanchun Xiong Institute of Molecular Medicine at Winber presents cryoshipper charging and liquid nitrogen transfer. Specimens that require transportation to or from Chanchun Xiong Institute of Molecular Medicine must be packaged in a way that the cold chain is maintained during transit. Cryoshippers are becoming more commonly utilized so that cryogenic temperatures can be maintained during transit and protect samples when delays occur. This video contains instructions for charging cryoshippers. First, record the empty weight of the cryoshipper. Remove the foam cap from the top of the doer. Make sure to wear appropriate PPE that follows established safety protocols, like a lab coat, face shield, cryo gloves, cryo apron, ear protection, and a portable oxygen monitor. Using an Outland hose with a face separator, fill the cryo shipper with liquid nitrogen to the bottom of the neck tube. Work slowly to prevent boiling of liquid nitrogen and accidental overflow during the fill process. Replace the firm cryo shipper lid. Let the cryo shipper sit for 15 minutes. Check to see if the liquid nitrogen level has dropped or remained the same. If it has fallen below the cryo shipper fill line, fill again and repeat until the liquid level no longer drops. You may have difficulty seeing the liquid level due to the vapor. You can use a cryogenic roller to displace the vapor. Place it slowly into the liquid nitrogen as it may cause boiling to occur due to the temperature difference. Once the liquid nitrogen level no longer drops, replace the lid and let the cryo shipper sit for 24 hours. At CSSIMMW, we use the MVE liquid nitrogen transfer pump to transfer all remaining freestanding liquid nitrogen from the cryo shipper into a cryogenic doer. To utilize the transfer pump, you need nitrogen gas cylinders to create a vacuum for the pump to function. Make sure you also have a two-stage pressure regulator to control the flow rate of the transfer. Remove the cylinder cap from the tank. Momentarily crack or open and close the nitrogen gas valve to dislodge any dust or dirt that may be present.
connect the two-stage pressure regulator to the gas use valve on the nitrogen gas cylinder and tighten securely with a wrench. Make sure to turn the pressure adjusting knob counterclockwise until there is no pressure on the adjusting spring. Use caution and place the suction end of the transfer pump into the cryo shipper, making sure it does not sit flat on the bottom of the container. Allow the metal to cool to prevent boiling and splashing of the liquid nitrogen. Place the discharged end with the phase separator into a cryogenic doer, making sure the separator remains above the liquid nitrogen level. Once both ends of the hose are placed in their respective containers, carefully open the gas use valve on the nitrogen cylinder until the tank level shows on the high pressure supply gauge. Never stand in front of or behind the two-stage regulator when opening the cylinder. Turn the pressure knob clockwise to initiate a low pressure delivery within the range of 22 to 50 psi. Do not exceed 50 PSI. Uh, liquid transfer will begin as soon as the transfer device is cold to liquid temperature. When the transfer of liquid nitrogen is complete, turn the pressure control knob counterclockwise for a delivery pressure of 0 psi. Close the gas use valve on the nitrogen cylinder and disconnect the two-stage pressure regulator by loosening with a wrench. Place the cylinder cap back on the nitrogen tank. Replace the cryo shipper lid and obtain the charged cryo shipper weight. Place the cryogenic doer in a secure location free from traffic until all liquid nitrogen evaporates. The cryo shipper is now ready to be shipped and should have a static hold time of 14 days. The static hold time will vary depending on the model of cryo shipper. <laughs>